So right now we're going to be dealing with chapter 24.4, which is rectification. And it looks like a lot of stuff here, but I assure you, this is um, a lot more simple than what we've been dealing with. So um, it shouldn't be too hard to get through. So what is rectification? Well, as you know, um, AC currents uh, produce a sinusoidal wave that looks like this, kind of. And that basically means in a circuit, if that's our AC power supply, um, the electrons first go that way, and they increase in the potential, and they decrease in the potential, and then they stop and they go the other way, and they increase potential and decrease potential. And the problem with this is a lot of electrical devices don't like it when um, electrons are flowing one way, and they suddenly start flowing the other way, and they keep changing. And that's just not good for a lot of electrical devices. Basically, all consumer electronics use a DC current, or, uh, well, not. They have to, yeah, they use a DC current, which means current flows in one direction the entire time. And um, we're kind of familiar with DC currents, they kind of look like this. So what we want to do is change this into this. So how do we do that? We do it for a process called rectification. Basically changing any wave where it's going in both directions into a wave where it goes into one direction is called rectification. And there's a few different types. So um. Basically, the main two types are full wave and half wave rectification. And I'll just back on my other point for a second. If you if you um, ever change batteries on anything like a TV or anything, you'll notice the battery case kind of has a positive negative side, and the negative side kind of has springs, and the positive side kind of has a middle plate. And if you put the battery in backwards, it won't work. And that's just an example of how electrical circuits only like it if the batteries, if a power supply is coming in one direction. If you reverse a direction, it can possibly damage the electrical components, and a lot of them just won't, just straight up won't work. So that's why it's like that. So there's two types of um, rectification: uh, full wave and half wave. So let's look at full wave first. Full. Uh, I'll draw my original natural AC here. So this is my natural AC, and that's voltage and time. And natural AC is a sinusoidal wave. Now, basically, um, actually, you want to look at half wave first because that's intuitively the first thing you'd come with. So, um, half wave rectification is basically where you, um, you where you cut out all of this bottom stuff, all the lines on the bottom. You just cut out, and um, you're left with kind of a truncated wave kind of thing. So you kind of got this wave here, and then all this bit here is cut off, and then we got another bit here. And then you got another bit here. And you're kind of missing all of this bit here. And I mean, this is just a kind of rectification. It's not, we don't normally use this because as you can see, half a timeout, there's no power flowing through the circuit at all. And we're kind of wasting all this energy over down here. Um, and the other way, so that's half, that's half wave. Half wave. Um, and full wave looks like this. Full wave. Uh, full wave rectification looks like basically what we've done is we've changed. Looks like a whole lot of camel humps. Looks like this. And this one is the one that we prefer and we use most of the time. So basically, over here, um, we have we've we've just taken the electrons and we just kind of stopped them from going in the negative direction and we just made them always flow in one direction so we still have a wave nature of it of um of ac curve of alternating current curve but what we've done is we've basically taken all the current that flows in the bottom direction and we've changed it we forced it to flow upwards instead so this is full wave and that's half wave rectification so um there's two of our points done already so how do we get half wave rectification half wave is a very very simple process Basically, if I can just go ahead and if I can just go ahead and delete delete this. Basically, how do we get halfway rectification? Draw for your circuit. Um, here's my AC circuit, and here's my. So here we go. Uh, you just all you have to do is go ahead and stick a diode in. If you remember what a diode is, um, diodes are drawn like this. They're kind of like an arrow with a line in front of it, and um. Diodes basically um, only let current pass in the direction in, that, in which the arrow points. So if I have, and then I have my, maybe I have my resistor here, which is my load, and that's that's a, that's it. Halfway rectification. It's that simple. As you can see, um, electrons will first try and flow in this direction. They uh, they'll pass in the diode, and the diode will say, "Okay, go on through." They go through and they do the normal business, which is um, this first half here. But then when they go ahead and try and change direction, and when they try and go in this way, and then they'll they'll, they'll run into the diode. And we'll say, oh, hold on, this isn't, oh, it's actually the star should be on this side. 
But anyway, well, the diode, or actually, well, it doesn't matter. But the electrons will come in here, and they'll say, the diode won't let them pass. So there'll be no voltage passing through. It's actually easier to imagine that if you put on the side, because electrons will hit the barrier first, then the electrical device. But electrons have this kind of funny thing where they're smart, and they know what's coming up beforehand, and they'll see this, this barrier there anyway, and they just won't even try going through. But, I mean, it's just easier to imagine it being here. But it can be in either place. You only need one diode, though. Um, so, um, basically, it's like a diode, uh, if you can imagine them, are like brick walls which are one way. Cars can go through one way, or electrons can go through one way, but it, they cannot go through the other way. They kind of bounce off. So, um, that's half-wave rectification. It's very simple. How does full-wave rectification work? Um, we use something called a bridge rectifier, which is, um, which I will draw for you now. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this half-wave because we don't need it anymore. So, I mean, as you can see, someone had a brilliant idea about a special arrangement of, um, of rectifiers which, will, which would provide full-wave rectification. So I'm going to go ahead and put this wave back here. So there's, my, there's your picture of full wave again, just so, just to remind you. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a full wave. So imagine here's our AC, here's our AC power supply, like that. And um, it, remember, it doesn't matter which way is positive or negative. So here we go. So here they come out here, and then what happens? Um, basically, we have an arrangement of uh, uh, rectifiers that looks like this. If I draw my we make a kind of square diamond kind of shape, and then we make this one go here, one going pointing that way, one pointing that way, one pointing that way, and one pointing that way. And then this goes on to lead on to uh, whatever our circuit is and, you know, whatever we want our circuit to have in it, and maybe we can have a resistor here or whatever. So, um, this one will be the... This one will be the negative uh, potential current flow that way. So this will be the positive terminal, and this one will be the negative terminal. How do I know that? Okay, let's try to analyze what happens when the um, current flows this way. So when the current flows this way, it will come across, and then it will go here. And then look, this way there's a roadblock, and this way it can pass through. So it will pass through here, follow, and then it, if it tries to come down here, there will be another roadblock. So it only has one possible option. So I'm going to kind of draw this for you in blue. So if electrons will come round, come round, we'll see there's only one possible option. And again, there's only one possible option. We'll flow through the circuit, flow around, flow around, up here. And then, see, again, um, there's two possible options here. Uh, it looks like it can go either that way, or it can go that way. And, um, I mean, to be honest, since it's just returning, uh, in this case, it will be going to this one, because uh, in this portion, um, of the current. Right now, this is positive and that's negative for this part, because this is AC current. So you can see how that works out. The current flows in this kind of general direction. Put arrows on everything so you can kind of see. And um, it only has one possible path the whole way. It, when it comes back, it can't go that way, because that way is also positive. Electrons always flow from positive to negative. Now what happens if I take another color, and then I draw the electrons flowing the other direction? So green is the other way. So now the terminals are swapped around, as you can see in AC, and they're starting to flow the other way. So now this is a positive terminal, and that is a negative terminal. And let's draw the conventional current going. Conventional current comes around here, and it'll look, this way is a blocked off wall, and this way it lets it through. So it comes around here, and look, it's actually going the same direction as it went before. And you see it comes around again, and it comes up here, and again there's the two options, but this will always go to the negative terminal because of the fact that, um, because of the fact that um, pot, uh, pot conventional current flows towards negative. So you can see that during the functional current, it doesn't matter which way the AC is providing the circuit, um, the circuit, the current in the circuit always flows in the same direction, and it flows all the time. Unlike the single diode where it cuts off half the time, it will flow the entire time, and that's because of intelligent design of this little arrangement of diodes here called the bridge rectifier. So now that we've solved the problem of turning AC into DC effectively, I mean, our, our electric devices like this. They think this is useful. Um, they can use this. They, so now we've solved that problem. There's still one more problem. Um, look at the voltage varying over time in this um, graph here. Voltage goes up, then down, then up, then down. And I mean, at this point, it has zero voltage. 
you wouldn't really like it if your computer turned on and off 60 times a second because you'd lost power 60 times a second, would you? Because um, that's for frequency of this. These, these are normally at, uh, well, the ones in homes at least, are normally at 60 hertz. So, I mean, electric devices like a DC power supply, they kind of like a graph that looks like that. It's, uh, sorry. They look at a graph that looks like that. A constant stream of power. So we want to try to get that as close to constant as possible. And how do we do that? Well, um, we have we use a capacitor, which I hope, which hopefully you're familiar with. If you aren't, um, go check out my capacitor video, which will be up um, in some time. I hope sh hopefully shortly, and um, you'll see you'll see what I mean. But I mean, I'm not going to go into detail about how capacitors work right now. But in case you don't know, they're basically a battery. Of a, they're basically a short-term battery. So pretend now, kind of a new rectified current coming in, and there and up there and it's flowing, then basically what it does is when the capacitor is high energy, it charges up this capacitor until this is the same potential as um, as before. It charges up this capacitor until this is the same p uh, potential as the top voltage. So maybe the capacitor will charge until it's 240 volts, or whatever uh, the voltage coming in is. But then when this starts dropping down, um, what happens is this capacitor will start discharging and releasing its electrons in the place of this. So while this is um, while this is in a period of low, the capacitor kind of takes over and then discharges in its place. So you can see the current will start looking like that. And in the end, you kind of get a current which looks like this. So the, the capacitor kind of basically stores the high charge electrons and then discharges. And then when the new rate wave of high charge electrons come, they can they can the new they, they can go back into the capacitor and kind of refill it. So the, instead of um this kind of bumpy blue line, we get something that looks something like uh this. We'd get something that looks like this. Uh, it would go up, and then across, and then up, and across, and up, and across, and up, and across. And look at that. That is a lot more stable and nice. I mean, our our fluctuation. A voltage is only this tiny distance here. That might be only like um, two volts. And electric co electronic components can handle tiny variations in voltage. That doesn't really matter. It's when we have a huge 240 volt variation that we don't like. So this is basically. Um, so they will come here in this high period. This capacitor is charging, and over here it's discharging, and then over here it's charging with high potential electrons again, and over here it's releasing its potential electrons, and over here it's charging again, and then it's discharging again. Now you might be asking, what controls how well a capacitor can smooth a circuit? How well a circuit is smooth is basically how close it resembles a um, straight line. A badly smooth circuit might look like this. This is what a badly smooth circuit would look like. It would look like this. So you can see, this is still a little bit smoothed, but it's got a whole lot of variance. So we want to have a variance of a voltage as small as possible. The voltage stays within a very small range, and that's what you'd consider good smoothing. Good smoothing relies on something called the CR value, which is the capacitor resistance value. And this is basically a, a value which uh, measures how much a capacitor can discharge, or capacitance C, and a load resistance, that is the resistance of the whole circuit of R. And basically, this is what happens. If this is the voltage of capacitor, you must, you must know that the voltage of capacitor well, decreases as it discharges. But um, with a high CR, it looks like this. It can maintain a high... Its, its voltage kind of drops slowly. So that's a high CR, and with a low CR, it looks like this. The uh, voltage drops a whole lot more quickly. Now, if the time between this, if this is half a period here, and um, this is the period which we pass into discharge, half a period, um, in the half period, maybe it's um, this much time here. So if, if, if you're using a high CR, um, the, the voltage variance will be this value here. But if you have a low CR, the voltage variance will be this value here. And that's what it's really dependent on. And the, as a general rule, the higher the load resistance and the higher the CR, and the, the higher the capacitance, the higher the CR. So those are kind of general rules. And, and you see, generally, a, a capacitor with a larger capacitance will uh, smooth a circuit out better. But you have to know it's dependent on the CR value, which is a time constant value. And if you want to find out more about this, go check out my capacitor video. So that's basically, here we go, the voltage dropping over time. And um, high CR values lose the voltage less slowly, and in the time period, which is half the period of um, the, the AC wave, uh, is, the, is a period is the amount that voltage will drop in the whole circuit because of a discharge of a capacitor. So that's all we have to know about rectifiers, so I hope you've enjoyed this video, and um, I'll see you in the next one.